uh, episode today. We have some very special guests. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is John Mangerati, town manager. Uh, welcome to Java with John. Hopefully everybody's doing okay out there. I heard snow's coming tonight, uh, which is interesting for mid-April, uh, but uh, nothing surprises me anymore. So uh, this is Java with John. We're on 94.9 FM. We're also live on YouTube TV. Uh, we'll be taking your questions later. We have a, a great panel of guest speakers today. Uh, you can email questions to manager at actonma.gov. You can also call in questions today. We have someone available to answer the phone and, and pass your question along. The number is 978-929-6611. So the Job with John program is something that we've been doing at the Senior Center for over a year. Uh, we usually do it in person with a group of seniors at the Senior Center. And over the last month, we've been doing it uh, live and virtually on uh, this medium. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I usually give an update and then answer questions. Uh, and today we have some great guests to do the same. So just a general update. Um, everyone, I'm sure, is, is following the news and, and following all the advisories. People really need to uh, keep away from each other, six feet away and do what we can to help each other uh, prevent this COVID-19 from spreading further. Um, there is uh, always, I wanna remind everybody about the election, June 2nd. People are encouraged to vote by mail. Uh, you can get an application to vote by mail from going to actinma.gov slash elections. You can also tell them to call the town clerk's office for more information. Our library uh, has been doing a great job in publishing digital resources to keep uh, keep a bit, busy and keep people reading. So I'd encourage you to go to that, their website and check out what they have to offer. Um, we are, uh, um, I'm, on, I'm honored here today to have uh, the, the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Joan Gardner. Joan has uh, been a selectman in town for many years uh, and uh, she's been doing a great job leading us through this difficult time. So um, I think we, we, we have some great guests, but I'd like to start uh, and have Joan uh, say hello and. Um, say good morning so good morning joan how are you doing today good morning everybody it's great to be with you all even if this way and um, i just want to compliment john and all the town employees and all the different departments on the amazing job that they are doing this is a very difficult time and i'm so pleased with the effort that everybody has put in but i'd like to read a list of donations from the COVID-19 COVID supplies. It's quite a list. Rhonda Poirier, Neshoba High School, AB Schools, Middlesex Gastroenterology, Lombardo Team Loam, Insulet Corp, Roach Brothers, Barry Anson, Feng Hei Lu, John and Amy Churchill, Chanchala Ferrovasa, Meredith Ward, Annette Lotry, Yang Fen Metro West Bible Church, Angie So, Acton Chinese Language School, Denault Family, Marsha Charter, Carol McCarchi, Janet Munson, May Lu, Boston Metro West Bible Church in Littleton, Said Dino Acton Pharmacy, Exo Fang Tang, Jing Dong Kao, Unknown, Nicole Dentremont, unknown, 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 Rich Silverman, unknown, Jonathan Sides, Jack and Yu Shuang Po, Aloudin Chowdhury, Sarah Shamai, Matt McQuill, Kim Family, unknown, Mrs. Sen He Silmo Yang, unknown 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 and insulet corporation thank you very much to all who made the contributions it's greatly appreciated and thank you john yeah that's great so thanks for leading that reading that list we've been getting great support from our residents and businesses donating supplies and helping creating masks and other things and thank you uh, joan for reading that list for everybody uh, as we do uh, every week uh, we have an update from the nursing director heather york Heather, uh, uh, please tell us what's what's the latest. Good morning, everyone. Um, so as of today, we have uh, 44 positive um, 
COVID-19 residents in the town of Acton. Um, of those, uh, 15 have been released from isolation and have recovered. Uh, 29 are still under active surveillance. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you today was specifically about um, cloth face coverings. Um, the recommendation by the CDC and by Governor Baker is to wear a cloth face covering when you're out in the community where you cannot socially distance easily. Um, some of those places are the um, grocery stores and also um, pharmacies, things to that nature where um, the guidelines are in place, the amount of people in the stores um, based on their capacity has lowered, but it still can be difficult sometimes um, to socially distance at six feet or more if there's a lot of people in line, let's say. Um, so face coverings are an important part of helping to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Um, the CDC website has a very nice um, explanation of them um, and also uh, how to make your own at home. Um, I'm wearing my own to show you today. Um, this was made for me by my very good friend, Marsha Charter. So it's a, full, it's a covering of a cloth that I will wear in the community um, when I go grocery shopping. So the cloth covering um, should fit snugly but comfortably against the sides of your face. So it should have a nice uh, snug fit. If your straps are too long, you can always knot them a little bit tighter. If the elastics are, you know, based on the size of your head, if you're, if you have a child wearing it, you can always tie these in a knot. So it's a little bit tighter and just gives you that nice snug, um, snug fit onto your face. Um, so, so they should have obviously ties and ear loops. Um, you should look at making them it, with multiple layers of fabric. Um, you could also put some different filters inside. Um, they suggest coffee filters um, is, is a good uh, fit. And some of those can be washed. Um, of, of course, you wanna make sure that you allow for breathing without restriction. And then they should be able to be laundered and machine dried without damage or change to the fabric. Um, so they do recommend that you, you know, test out what you're making before you make additional ones, just to make sure that when you wash them, they're not going to shrink up and they're not going to fit any longer. Um, for children under the age of two um, or anyone who has trouble breathing, um, the mask is not suggested um, based on obviously a child under two may not have that capacity to tell you that they can't breathe correctly through that mask. So make sure that you're not putting these on young children. Um, and then anyone with a respiratory disease, um, if you feel that it is too constricting for you, you should avoid wearing it. Um, but my recommendation is if you have a respiratory disease, uh, um, any kind of asthma or COPD, and you can't wear these masks, I would recommend not going into um, any location that you can't safely social distance. Um, so washing these is just typically putting it in the washing machine. They do recommend that you wash anything that may, be, may have been exposed to other people who potentially have COVID-19 um, in a separate laundering than your regular uh, clothes and things like that. And again, it can go into the, in, into the dryer. So if you go to cdc.gov, they do have uh, a lot of um, demonstrations and, and uh, things that you can use to make these masks. Everything from you know fabric where you can sew them yourselves to t-shirts to dish cloths. Um, if you look on any YouTube video, um, there's people you know showing you actually how to make them and how they work. And there are some no sew mask uh, face coverings that you can make also that make it easy for people that don't have a sewing machine.
Thank you. And everyone stay safe. Thank you, Heather. Great job as always. Uh, this is the Java with John program on 94.9 FM. Uh, where we have some special guests today. This is John Mangerati, your town manager. Our next guest is uh, our chief of police, Richard Burrows. Uh, I want to remind all of our listeners that if you have questions for any of the guests or for me, please call 978-929-6611 or send an email to manager at actonma.gov. Chief Burrows, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, Good morning, everybody. Um, I know it's it's a tough time out there right now with uh, with all the changes that we're facing. Our officers are working hard to adapt to these uh, these changes as well. Um, thinking back to my police academy in the '80s, we didn't have a class on how to police in a pandemic, um, and I haven't seen anything like this in my career. In June, I'll start my 35th year in law enforcement. Uh, our officers are hardworking, cleaning their uh, cleaning and disinfecting all their equipment. Unfortunately, we have to share some equipment like police cruisers and tasers. So we're disinfecting those at the beginning and the end of each shift. Um, we are practicing social distancing at the police departments uh, with our interactions with the public. Uh, unfortunately, we've closed our lobby except for emergencies. We ask people to call our business line, 978-929-7711, uh, so we can service you as, as best we can. We are taking a lot of reports over the phone that we historically wouldn't normally do but we want to make sure we get uh, get everything done that we need to do. Um, we've seen a reduction in vehicle crashes uh, due to the uh, reduction in traffic out there, but we're still responding to mental health calls, domestic violence, and uh, substance use calls. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a challenge to make sure we keep up with our personal protective equipment. We just got a call from MEMA, Massachusetts Emergency Management, and they're actually providing five N95 masks for all police officers and firefighters in the state. We'll be picking those up next week. Um, I'd like to make a note that this week is National Telecommunications um, Week, uh, recognizing our uh, dispatchers. The first first responders, they're the people you typically come in contact with first when you call 911, and then they get the uh, the services to you that, that you need. So I'd like to recognize and thank them for all the work that they do during the course of the year. Uh, we'd also like to thank everybody in town that's been dropping off uh, donations of personal protective equipment, cleaning supplies, homemade masks, face shields, and, and our restaurants in town have been really, really generous. We've had uh, various breakfast, lunches, and dinners dropped off at the offices. I'd like to thank the uh, the community for their support and the support of our board of selectmen and our town manager as we uh, as we deal with policing in this in this cha challenging time. Thank you. Great, thanks. Nice job, Chief. So um, in, in throughout this uh, last month, we've been doing several things to try to keep our operations going. Uh, and we've also, we've also been doing a lot to try to do our outreach to residents that need help, um, more help than usual in times like this. And we have Laura Ducharme, our community resources coordinator, and that's her job year round uh, to, to reach out to members of the community and help where assistance is needed. But in this particular, period. Uh, she's been doing a lot of this work and she has a few uh, updates for us this morning. So uh, welcome, Laura. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as John mentioned, I am the community resource coordinator and my primary role is to provide resource and referral services to residents under the age of 60. And given this unusual time, I wanted to make the community aware that my office is available to assist you with connecting to a variety of resources, including mental health supports. The outbreak of the COVID-19 may be stressful for many people. Um, it is not uncommon to feel feelings such as fear, anger, anxiety, and frustration, and, of, and oftentimes sadness. If you or someone you care about are experiencing these feelings, Please know that you are not alone and that there's help and resources available. I put together a couple of um, resources today. There are many, many, many. But always in an emergency or a crisis situation, please call 911. There are helplines available through SAMHSA during this time. We have a disaster distress helpline, which is 1-800-985. 5990 and there's a text in option as well which is talk with us at 66746 and the town also subscribes to the William James College interface referral service this is not an emergency service but it is a referral service that you can certainly call into and they can connect you with a licensed therapist that will accept your insurance and they can be reached at 1 
888-244-6843. And I also wanted to just mention and bring up the practice of self-care. If that is not something that you already are incorporating into your routine, that may be something that you'd like to try during this time. Simple things such as healthy eating, sleeping regularly, getting outside, taking walks, trying yoga, trying meditation, finding a gym in the community that offers virtual classes. There's many that are going on right now. And also connecting and um, checking in with your friends and loved ones during this time. If you have any questions on any of these resources or any other things that you'd like to talk about, my office is available, 978-929-6651 or ldusharm at actonma.gov. Laura, can you say that number one more time, please? For people yep. um, 978-929-6651 or ldusharm at actonma.gov. Great job, thank you very much. So uh, like Laura, uh, she has been doing a lot of outreach with our community. Our seniors are particularly uh, in need during this period and our Council on Aging Director Sharon Mercurio has been doing a great job in keeping in touch with all of them. And um, Sharon, uh, please let us know uh, what's new. All right, well, first of all, I just wanted to thank you, John, the Board of Selectmen and all the town departments for taking the time to reach out to the seniors each week. Um, I know things have really been crazy. Um, so taking this extra time to try to reach out to folks that may not be on the computer and, and accessing technology uh, is huge. So thank you. I um, also wanted to thank one of our residents who's taken it upon herself to do daily updates. Um, Marion Maxwell has um, been an active participant of the Senior Center and during this time has really amped up her communication with the senior um, residents, just keeping them informed about different things they could be doing in their free time, uh, throwing it in with a joke, you know, something helpful hint for me, try out your jeans once a week to make sure they still fit, yeah, little things like that. <laughs> um, wanted to write, remind folks too um, that the transfer station has added senior hours. So every morning from seven to eight, um, it's for seniors only, and they've also added an additional day. So keep that in mind. Um, the United Way has a grant. They've done some phone fundraising. They know this is a difficult time um, for folks. Some have lost income. So situations have really changed drastically. Um, Laura's gonna be the contact person for that. So if you have questions, if you're um, having some difficulty making ends meet, please reach out to either the Council on Aging or to Laura Ducharme. Also a reminder that fuel assistance has extended its deadline. So fuel assistance, the season goes from November to April and that hasn't changed, but um, to apply used to, the deadline was April 30th and they've extended that now till May 29th knowing again that people's financial situations have changed. So um, again, you can reach out to, to us to let us know if um, you have questions, to find out if you're in that income guidelines and we can um, give you the information you need to move forward. Um, the district attorney sent this great article yesterday from the Atlantic and it was saying how so much of the focus right now is of course on the, the physical crisis and the economic crisis, but it was talking about um, the, the social piece of everything that we could be heading for a social um, recession as well. And I really found that interesting um, and really talking about the importance of those social connections. And they had um, kind of four helpful hints to help people stay connected. Um, the first one was you know, try to communicate with somebody for at least 15 minutes a day, um, whether that's on the phone, if you're virtually having a cup of coffee with someone, um, really reach out and that helps um, strengthen not only your, your connections with that person, but also connection with the outside world. Sometimes you kind of find yourself in your, your own little bubble. Um, and then secondly, to make that time that you do connect with others, really as distraction free as possible. Um, you know, if you're on the phone, don't throw in a tub of laundry and make yourself a cup, cup of coffee, really just try to focus on that person and that uh, conversation that you're having with them. Um, the third one was to take some time um, 
just to appreciate the solitude, which we tend not to do, especially in this world of technology, kind of any of that downtime, we seem to have a device in our hand or the television on or whatnot. So to take some quiet time to yourself and really, you know, start off with a couple of minutes and try to build it up, but um, to breathe and be appreciative and, and ground yourself during these crazy times. And the fourth suggestion was to help others. Um, you know, helping others helps not only build community, but it does help you find some value. Um, what you do, even though it might seem kind of minuscule, really makes a difference to people. Um, and I think on the flip side too, to accept help, ask for help, because you're going to give somebody else that value um, in life. So um, wanted to remind folks to um, keep a lookout on our website if you're able to go online. Um, the program manager has been really hard looking for different virtual programs and that sort of thing. And Rosie's been updating it on the newsletter tab on actincoa.com. Um, we've been working with Terry Zaborowski. She's added another uh, exercise video, Active Aging, that we're working with Acton TV on, on where the best place would be to put it in their schedule. So keep your eyes on that. Um, and that's all I have for now. Um, don't hesitate to give our office a call. Somebody will get back to you, 978-929-6652. Thanks. Great, uh, great job, Sharon. Hey, Sharon, uh, do you have another poem for us today? I do. All right, great job. You've been, uh, you haven't disappointed us yet, so we all look forward to uh, closing out the program with, with your poem. Uh, did you read it this week? Mm -hmm. did you write the poem? I did not write it, no. I was teasing my kids that I was going to do expressive dance because they're mortified with me doing this, but that's okay. <laughs> we, can, we can work that into the program next time. Uh, all right, very good. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's sort of all the presentations that we had for all of you today. We have uh, dozens of listeners, uh, or viewers rather, watching on YouTube, and I'm sure there are thousands listening on the radio. So uh, we can take your, your calls now, 978-929-6611. Uh, or you can send in questions to uh, manager at actonma.gov. Uh, so let's see what we have so far for questions. Um, here's a question from a resident. If we see a business or individual violating the guidelines for uh, social distancing, who should we call? So uh, that's a good question. I think uh, during this period, people that are on the community have a very heightened sense of awareness of, of uh, what everybody else is doing. And I think it's concerning if you see people that aren't taking the same measures that, that you think are necessary uh, personally and that we've been trying to advise everybody to take. So if you identify a problem like that, uh, please feel free to reach out to our Board of Health. Uh, their phone number um, I can make available in a second um, unless someone on the line knows it by heart um, and it's uh, you know it's it's something you can follow up if it's at an establishment definitely follow up if it's if it's a neighbor or friend maybe find a way to talk to them about it um, and if it's an emergency call the police but um, that's a great question thank you very much uh, another question we have that came in um, are there any known scams that people should be aware of such as fake supplies being sold or stimulus check uh, issues or anything else that people are impersonating government officials looking for money or getting into your house? Uh, Chief, that sounds like a great question for you to answer. <laughs> Certainly. Um, so as we uh, look at our police services and try to um, adapt our response in this, in this new environment, um, so do the scammers. So just like any, any other scams, um, they're going to come through the same way they've been doing them. There's no real new scams, but they just give them different names. So every year about this time when people are trying to get their tax returns back, the phone calls come in saying we're with the IRS and there's a problem with your tax return. And they try to get people to give their personal information over the phone. So now they're going to be calling and it's going to be COVID related. It's going to be your board of health. You might have been in contact with somebody. Um, if you're not sure who you're talking to, please hang up the phone whatever agency they claim they're from 
you can look up the phone number, call that agency directly to make sure you you know who you're talking to. Um, we've got some scams coming out now where they're texting random numbers. Um, don't click on any links in any emails, even if it looks like it's from your bank. Um, one of the scams we saw a few years ago, the, the address, it looks like it's from your bank. They can copy all the graphics from your bank's websites uh, and emails and make it look like it's coming from them. But if you look clo closely at the address, um, they'll change an I to a one or a one to an I. Uh, unless you're looking closely, you don't even notice it. And a lot of the links now don't even clearly spell out where the address is going to. As you hover over the link with your mouse, it'll show you an address. And a lot of those addresses aren't even www.actonma.gov. Um, they're, they're crazy addresses. So don't click on any links in your emails. Don't um, give any information over the phone. If, if it's a serious enough call, then they'll, they'll expect you to call them back. That's the best information we can give you. Don't give out your personal information. Thank you, that's helpful. Um, I appreciate that. So the, the Board of Health, the phone number to the Board of Health, just getting back to that earlier question, it's 978-929-6632. Uh, but thank you, Chief, for the information on scams. Uh, here's a question about finances. So. Given how much the economy has changed since the fall, when initial plans were made for the budget, are the selectmen planning to change the request to town meeting uh, when town meeting is scheduled? Uh, that's a great question. So as many of you know, we had, I presented a budget on in December of last year and the board of selectmen um, have recommended it to the finance committee. The finance committee recommended it to town meeting and we were all set to go. Town meeting was supposed to happen on May, I mean, uh, April 6th and 7th, but it did not because it's been delayed due to this COVID-19. Uh, so the, the day for town meeting has not been set yet. Uh, the board of selectmen are closely monitoring the situation and we'll, and we'll make a decision um, when information is available about when it's safe to do so. Uh, with regards to what the budget and any changes we may make to the budget, those, those decisions haven't been made at this point. There's a lot of things that uh, we're still evaluating and understanding. Uh, one thing the board did do last week was uh, vote to allow residents a little more time to pay their quarterly tax payments that are due May 1st. Uh, residents have until June 1st to pay these and any fees or interest wouldn't be charged as long as the final payments are in by uh, the end of June. So we're gonna continue to monitor the situation, work with our selectmen, work with the finance committee, work with our finance staff to understand any changes that we may need to make at this point. Uh, we haven't uh, made any, and but we certainly are gonna have that discussion leading up to the eventual town meeting. So thank you for the question. Uh, what else do we have out there? Oh, we have a caller. Wait a minute. We have a caller on the line. Let's see if we can make this work. Um, Austin Saganowitz from, um, from uh, the town manager's office. What's the what's the question? Thanks, John. Question from a caller is, what are we doing to help restaurants? Great, uh, great question. Thank you, caller. Um, the we our economic development director Selby and all of our staff uh, have been trying to do what we can to help local restaurants. Uh, we've partnered with um, Acton Restaurant Week, a program that we did last year for Restaurant Week, and we've been using that. Uh, program to promote our local restaurants and, and say who's doing takeout and who who's available and what services they're providing. Uh, we're also actually launching this afternoon an exciting new program uh, called uh, Takeout Selfie. So uh, we're going to, I think the first one will be out this afternoon. We're encouraging uh, residents and anyone to safely take a selfie of themselves at one of our local restaurants and posting it. And uh, we're gonna try to generate some buzz uh, and that way to try to help out our, our small uh, businesses in our restaurant community. So, uh, and we have some other ideas that we're actually going to be bringing to the selectmen on Tuesday uh, for ideas that uh, we could implement that would uh, help some of our businesses that are that may be struggling through this time. Uh, so, thank you. That's a great question. And uh, if you get takeout, uh, take a selfie, and uh, we'll we'll put it online for you. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> What else do we have for questions? Oh, here's a question about the United Way. Um, Sharon, you mentioned that Laura is the contact for the United Way grant program. 
Laura, can you say a little bit more about how that works and what that is for our, for our residents out there? Sure. Um, due to the COVID-19 um, crisis, United Way has launched a capital campaign and they have been raising funds to directly help residents in need with things such as uh, partial rent payments, mortgage payments, utilities, and other uh, food and other basic needs. Um, there is an application process that you would have to meet with myself or one of the Council on Aging or other social service um, town staff over the phone to complete and they will require some supporting documentation, but that fund is available if people want to apply. Um, they can certainly call my office, 978-929-6651. Um, they will be posting grant criteria on the ABUW website, but if anyone wants to talk with me before that, uh, I'd be cer certainly glad to go over the criteria with anyone who would like to learn more. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, here's a question from um, one of our uh, viewers. It was nice that the COA called me to check in a couple of weeks ago. Will they be doing that again sometime? Hi. Um, yes, so we uh, tried to make some initial calls and some folks would like a regular call. So we're calling them daily or weekly. Um, we had some difficulty getting through to some folks because it wasn't accepting block calls. So. Our IT department's been working really hard to um, let us access an app that will um, let us make calls from home that will appear to be a town number so people will be more comfortable answering it. And as this crisis continues, we, we will be going through the list again and checking in with folks again. But if you or you know somebody that may want to be called more frequently, definitely reach out to us and, and we can add you to our, our check-in list as well. Okay, great. Well, uh, we're at the, the half hour mark here on uh, the Driver with John program on 94.9 FM. Uh, we get some great questions from some listeners and, and viewers and uh, some great presentations from our guests this morning. So I think we're ready to wrap it up. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that without hearing a poem uh, from Sharon Mercurio. Uh, so please, uh, let's hear what you have to say today. All right, I have to admit, I go for the small ones, the short ones, but that's okay. Um, today's is from Jack London. I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. I would rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in a magnificent glow than a sleepy and permanent planet. The function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. I may have lots of it, so. <laughs> yeah, that's very, uh, that's good. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. So thank you all for uh, watching and listening. This has been Job with John on April 17th. Uh, be safe out there, everybody. Take care.